Day 400. Today there is a lot of news from the Donetsk region. Here Russian forces have been conducting incredibly intense ground attacks until they started running out of forces. Some assault battalions started complaining that the survival rate in Avdiivka is only about 11%. In order to prevent the culmination of their campaign, Russian forces even started sending artillerists into battle. They were given guns and four-day training and were sent to storm Ukrainian trenches. Last time I told you that Russian forces wished to high-caliber artillery mortars and air bombs to level with the ground residential area because it did not allow them to approach the city. I also told you that the situation to the north of Avdivka has stabilized and the Russians did not secure any additional ground. The freshest reports suggest that the area under Russian control is actually smaller than previously estimated. As you remember, during the previous Russian offensive campaign, they were supposed to capture two out of three remaining Ukrainian positions. The Russian side recently released combat footage, showing how they assaulted and captured a Ukrainian strong point north of the settlement. It looks like Russian forces used at least four armored vehicles and a lot of infantry. They managed to suppress Ukrainian fire and get closer to the trenches and gradually push the Ukrainians westward. The video also shows that at least a full squad of Ukrainians managed to get away. It looks like there are at least two trench networks still under Ukrainian control. One in the western part of the village near the lake and one east of the lake in the tree line. Today Russian sources reported that they tried to get closer to the trenches but only engaged in positional fights with no changes to the front line. The updated setting indicates that Novobakhmutivka is still under partial control of Ukrainians. Although due to the geography, the position inside the village itself has almost no tactical value because it is located in a deep valley. So whoever controls the trenches on the hills around it is the one who controls the settlement. This also explains why Russians are attacking the trenches in the tree line from the south and not from the settlement itself. Ukrainian sources also reported a lot of actions around Krasnogorivka. Ukrainian assault drone detachment from the 110th Brigade showed how they effectively prevented another Russian attack. The video features another instance of tight cooperation between artillery and drone operators and shows how the spotted assault squad gets destroyed by artillery fire. Another footage shows the aftermath of an assault from Krasnogorivka that Russians managed to realize. Here Russians lost at least two armored vehicles and around a dozen troops. As seen from the map, Russian forces remain vulnerable to counterattacks from the north, so they started taking measures to protect their flanks by mining the area suitable for potential counterattacks. Unfortunately for Russians, Ukrainian drone operators from the 110th Brigade spotted a pile of mines that Russians prepared to use and burned it down. So Ukrainian drone operators are dealing a lot of damage to Russian forces, and their situation is about to deteriorate even further because Ukrainians have recently relocated to Avdiivka, the most famous drone formation, which is Magyar's Birds Drone Battalion. Russian assaultmen from the 5th Brigade recently posted a video where they said that their battalion was completely annihilated in suicidal attacks from Vodyane. The battalion initially had 161 soldiers, but after sending one squad after another, only 19 of them are still alive. They said that they were forced to attack because anti-retreat forces in the back threatened to kill everyone who refuses the order. And this is one of the best troops that Russians have, because many of them have prior combat experience after fighting in Donbass in 2015 as volunteers. Simultaneously, Russian mobilized soldiers said that after completing the training for artillery, instead of artillery, they were given guns and were sent to Donetsk to storm Ukrainian positions. Their families also made a public appeal to the president. Today, British intelligence also reported that Russians are preparing to mobilize 400,000 more people. In order to mitigate the countrywide discontent, the mobilization is planned to be announced as voluntary. They already tried to gather at least one battalion worth of volunteers in each region and failed, so if they couldn't find even close to 50,000 volunteers, they are unlikely to have 400,000 more. In reality, recruitment offices will just covertly mobilize whomever they can to fulfill the quotas. And some Russian citizens also started mentioning that for some reason, they received letters from the recruitment offices with the kind notice to check whether their registered address was up to date in their system. Overall, it looks like after losing thousands of soldiers in Volodar, an additional spike in losses in Avdiivka put a huge strain on the number of assault formations in the regular Russian army and forced them to take drastic measures, such as sending mobilized soldiers that have been trained for three months for a completely different job.
That is why Russians seem to be preparing for another wave of mobilization. Although with dwindling professional units, a huge inflow of newly mobilized men may degrade the Russian army to the point where everyone barely knows what to do. If you're against the invasion of Ukraine and you want to support the work that I am doing, consider making a purchase in the online store UA Supporter. Here you can find a lot of products with Ukrainian symbols to not only show your support for this channel, but also for Ukraine. The link to the online store is in the description. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next report.